Okay, now let's discuss the bernstein vazirani algorithm. Okay, so the setup is the same. We have Oracle access to a function f, and we again have some promise that f satisfies a certain property. Okay, but in this case, the property is that we are guaranteed that there's an n-bit string s such that f of x is equal to the dot product of x with s modulo 2. Okay, so that's the promise. So um, for such an f, we're given access to an, to an oracle for f, and now our problem is to determine what s is. So that's the goal. We want to determine what s is. Okay, so actually the quantum algorithm for, the, for this problem is exactly the same as in the deutsch josa case. Okay, we're going to do a Hadamard on the first register, apply a phase oracle for f, and then again apply Hadamard on the first register. Okay, so let's go ahead and see why that works. Okay, so after we do a Hadamard and then the phase oracle, uh, so the Hadamard uh, on the first register, it creates uniform superposition over all n-bit strings, and then we apply a phase oracle, uh, so that puts us in, in this state here, sum over all x, minus 1 to the f of x uh, times x. Now remember what, what f of x is, we're promised that it's going to be s dot x for some string s. Okay, so we're in this state here for some s. Okay, but what is this state here that we've created on the first register? This is exactly the Hadamard times s, okay? So remember, this is the, you know, the action of the Hadamard on, on basis state s. Okay, so in the first register here, we've actually created the Hadamard acting on s. So what that means is that if we apply Hadamard to the first register again, that is just going to uh, bring us back to the state s, right? Hadamard times the Hadamard is the identity. Okay, so when we apply the Hadamard on the first register again, then we're just left in the state S tensor 1. Okay, so after measuring, we're going to get this state with, with certainty, and then we can learn S. Okay, so now we've seen that with just one quantum query, we can determine S. How many queries do we need classically? Okay, so you can see that even a deterministic algorithm, uh, you can solve this problem with, with n queries. Okay, why is that? Well, you can just query, uh, first you can query x, where x has a 1 in the first bit, and then zeros everywhere else. Right? And then you learn the first bit of s, okay, by, by the answer to that query. And then you can query the x that has a 1 in the second position, okay, etc. Okay, and in that way you can you can learn what s is uh, with just n queries. And this is kind of the intuition for the lower bound as well. In order to learn s, you have to learn n bits of information, and every query, you know, is just giving you one bit of information. Okay, so you can uh, turn that into a formal argument to show that even a randomized algorithm must make omega n queries in order to learn s. Okay, so um, so that's the bernstein vazirani algorithm. Again, just to summarize, it's a problem uh, that can be solved with one quantum query, and even a randomized algorithm takes omega n queries to solve it. So now we're getting a separation even between quantum algorithms and classical randomized algorithms.